All right, guys, let's get some NBA picks and props for Friday, February 2nd, slate of games. Trey, let's take a look at that leaderboard for us. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I am 0-1. That's because I gave out the Pacers plus 4.5 against the Knicks. The Pacers, they barely covered for us here. They lost by 4, so we won on the hook. Uh, and they were trying their best to give away the cover in the fourth quarter. They completely crumbled after winning basically this entire game. But, hey, a cash is a cash. Yeah, and I'm 0-0 currently. I've got the Jazz minus 4 tonight against the 76ers. We'd be in the game. We're down by 10 right now to the 76ers uh, late in the second quarter. Tyrese Maxey's got 31 points, so maybe put a hand up in Tyrese Maxey's face. He's on pace for 62, so we need to put we need to play some defense on uh, Tyrese Maxey. Everything else looks pretty good. Only down by 10. I'll take that with Maxey 30 points, but uh, hopefully we can go 1-0 and sweep the board there. Trey, let's go to our player props for uh, yesterday. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I am 0-1 on the player props. That's because I gave out Jason Tatum over 27 half points versus my Lakers. Tatum, he only scored 23 points in this game. I would not have gave out this pick if I knew LeBron go King James was sitting here. Uh, kind of threw a wrench in it because Tatum always shows up big against Goat James. But didn't cash, burned my soul, so it's a loss. Outright loss by the Celtics without LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Embarrassing for the Celtics on their home floor. Only their second loss of the season on the home floor as well. Uh, I gave out Keontae George to go over 10.5 points going up against 76ers. He's got seven points right now in his first run um, with the second team. He came off the bench tonight, nine minutes, seven points. So he's doing really well. Hopefully he can get that over 10.5 for us in the second half. Trey, let's go to the graphic for our uh, group play yesterday. It was the Lakers going up against Boston. I gave out the Lakers with the points. I was very upset today at work. I texted you. I said, how in the hell does LeBron James and Anthony Davis keep getting away with this? And they won outright. Uh, obviously, you had Boston, so you take the loss there. But let's go on to uh, the group play for tomorrow in the NBA. It's going to be a good game. The Golden State Warriors going up against the Memphis Grizzlies. Golden State on the road, minus 5.5, over under is 223.5. Thoughts on this game? Yeah, and real quick about that LeBron James. I literally just told my coworkers five minutes before you texted me, I said, yes, I love my Las Vegas Raiders. I love Kansas State. But my big thing is LeBron James. I love LeBron James. I hate when people talk crap on LeBron James. And, guys, mm -hmm. uh, just to read verbatim what Bear said to me five minutes after I told uh, my uh, coworkers that, he said, fuck, you're fucking fuck, fucking fuck, fuck, Jesus effing fuck. I lost, blah, 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 because Goat James is not playing. Well, Bear, you won. So some reverse karma coming your way, and I – just thought that was hilarious because I just told my coworkers that how much I love them and I hate when people talk crap at them. And you sent that text, but enough of that. And let's get right into this game. This is going to be a fun That'd game. Be fair though, Trey, I was at work and I was very upset because I took the Lakers plus eleven or ten and a half, and then all of a sudden they were plus sixteen. I was like, well, LeBron James is out, and then I was like, well, nope, LeBron James and Anthony Davis are out. So I was pretty upset at the time. So yeah, all right, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be a fun game to watch. Only in you enjoy watching blowouts, guys. Give me the Golden State Warriors here, minus five and a half. The Grizzlies, they're feisty, but they are absolute garbaggio at home. I think they're like five and 18 at home or something along those lines this season. It is just not very good. Golden State, they've actually been better on the road than at home this season, something that you could not have said in the past. Mm -hmm. Definitely not last season whenever they were abysmal on the road, but I think they're going to show up here in this game. They really have no other choice, guys. They have to win this game. They have to win in convincing fashion. The All-Star break's coming up. They need to start turning the wheel at some time. And I think that this is a best game, if any, to do it. Draymond Green, he's going to get a greedy with Jaron Jackson Jr. in the post. Shut him down. Not much else to worry about outside of him. Desmond Bain out. John Morant out, obviously. Everyone out. And they just trade away their heart and soul. They trade away Steven Adams today to the um, Houston Rockets, maybe. I'm not quite sure yeah, where he went. Three, but, three um, second round picks. Yeah. yeah, regardless, you can't trade away your heart and soul and expect your team still to play. Uh, give me the Golden State Warriors here, minus five and a half. Yeah, this is kind of like the Lakers game yesterday. Um, Grizzlies plus five and a half for myself. Uh, if you see the key player down there, Jaron Jackson Jr., only starter from the start of the year. They've got four bench players uh, that start of the year are starting in this game. But Memphis has been really good over the last three or four games. They've covered the spread in all those games. They've only allowed 110 points one time in those three games. They're playing really good defense. And that was against the Pacers as well. So the Pacers, they can score. They're one of the best scoring teams in the NBA. Um, Golden State, they've also played in a lot of clutch games, which that means it's a five-point game under five minutes. They've played in 32 of those games. So I do think this game's going to be close. They've only played 48 total games. So 75% of their games are close down the stretch, five-point games. I'm going to take the Grizzlies at home, plus five and a half. They've been playing good basketball. They're playing good defense. 
Um, again, kind of like what's he thinking, just like the Lakers pick yesterday. I'm going to take the Grizzlies plus five and a half. We're going to split. Trey, let's go to our play for the NBA tomorrow. Have you starts off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to take us over to the Phoenix Suns going up against the Atlanta Hawks game. And I'm very excited to watch this game. We're going to see some fireworks throughout this one. And the Suns, they come to this game with a 27 and 20 record. They're also 18, 28 and 2 ATS. Phoenix, they're 14 and 9 on the road this season, though. They've been road warriors all season long. And the Hawks, they enter this game with a 20 and 27 record. And they're 12 and 35 ATS in Atlanta. They are 10 and 13 at home this season. That is not overly good, but you kind of have to throw the records out the window because these two teams, they do not like each other. But one team, it's kind of dominated the matchup historically. The Hawks, they're 7-3 and three straight up over the last 10 games versus the Suns. And I kind of expect that trend to continue here in this game. Give me the Hawks plus 3.5 as home pups here. I love that we're getting points here because I honestly think the Hawks are going to win this game because this Suns team, yes, they have those three studs. But outside of them, their team is just kind of abysmal and embarrassing to look at. And this Hawks team, in my opinion, they have enough firepower to match Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. And whenever we look at the bench, guys, it's just not a comparison. The Hawks bench is significantly better than what the Suns are throwing out there. And especially with this being a home game, I expect those role players to play their roles very well and show up here. And I love that the Hawks are also coming into this game with some momentum behind them as well. Because they've won two straight games where they beat the Lakers and the Raptors. So I think they're going to carry that momentum here towards the All-Star break. So give me the home team here to pull off an upset win, but I'm going to be taking the points with the Hawks plus three and a half versus the Suns. Yeah, Trey, I like that play there. Uh, for my play today, we're going to be looking at the Orlando Magic going up against the Timberwolves. A couple good quality teams in this matchup. The Magic, they're back to full strength. They're really back in that lineup. They're coming off a strong performance against the Spurs uh, in that last game, defensively speaking. And I'm going to back them in this game, plus seven and a half against the T-Wolves. I think this is going to be a rock fight between the two teams. Uh, this is two of the better defenses in the NBA, and giving me 7.5 points seems like a ton. I can see this game also going down to the wire, and neither one of these teams can win, so I don't hate taking the Magic on the money line either. But Orlando, they have now covered the spread in three consecutive games after getting all their starters back to go alongside Paulo. This is a very scrappy young Magic team, and I think they're on the verge of making a pretty big playoff run over the last three games in this little winning streak against the spread they've had. They've allowed under 100 points in two of those three games, and I think the defense is going to play a major part in this one. They will, uh, they're they going to be going up against a tough opponent on that side of the ball as well, and the Timberwolves, who also have a very stingy defense this season. But neither of these teams are great offensively, and I don't think either of these teams have the advantage in scoring. So that's why I'm going to take the points in this game. Both teams are in the bottom 10 in points per game on offense. Both teams top five in defense. This should be a very close battle down to the end. I expect whoever can make a couple shots in the last four minutes of the game is going to take this one. But I'm going to take the points with the Magic as the play on the road. Trey, let's go to those props for tomorrow. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm just going to be talking about the player prop in a game that Bear just talked about. But I'm going to be going with Rudy Gobert to go over 26 and a half PRs versus the Magic here. I honestly really love this over for Gobert in, his, in this game because I do think that we're going to see him dominate. The Magic, yes, like Bear said, they just got back to, four, to full strength. So it does mean that Wendell Carter Jr. is back. But that does not worry me here because historically Gobert, he has cooked the Magic. In his last four games versus Orlando Gobert, he's averaging a massive 18.3 points and 10 and a half rebounds per game, which comes up to 28.8 PRs, which is over this number. And Gobert, he's actually played against Orlando already once this season. And in that game, he got 33 PRs. And I kind of expect something similar here because the big thing for Gobert this season is he's dominating in the Timberwolves wins. And I know that Bear just gave out the Magic plus seven and a half, but the T-Wolves, they are very great at home. So they might not cover, but I do expect them to win this game straight up. And Minnesota's 34 wins this year. His splits go way up compared to the losses. Gobert, he's averaging 27.6 PRs in wins. So I expect the T-Wolves to beat the Magic. Gobert to play really good, just like against the Magic, as he always does. Plays good at home, just like he always does. Give me Rudy Gobert here to go over 26 and a half PRs versus the Magic. Yeah, Trey, I don't, I don't mind that one at all. I like Rudy Gobert for that play. Uh, for my play today, I'm going to go back to the Golden Goose. CJ McCollum going to go over 2.5 made threes. I think it's going to be dropped to 2.5 because there's been a cold front in this Pelicans organization over the last few weeks for CJ McCollum from the outside. But I think that's going to change in this game against the Spurs. CJ McCollum over the last five games has not gone over his three-point mark in four of those five games, and he only made one three-point shot in two of those games. The volume is still there. But he just hasn't found any rhythm, especially going up against this really tough schedule over the last four games. The quality of posts have been great. 
He played the Thunder, the Bucks, the Celtics, and the Rockets. They didn't do any favors for him with his shooting performance. But we're going to get a great matchup against one of the worst teams in the NBA and the Spurs. San Antonio, they're giving up 121.1 points per game and 41.1 points per game come from deep, which is tied for the third worst in the NBA. Like I said before, the shot volume for CJ, it's still there. He just needs a great matchup to get himself back on track, back into rhythm, and this is the matchup to do it. Give me CJ McCollum to go over 2.5 made threes, and I think he hits this before the halftime as well. CJ McCollum over 2.5 threes as the play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Happy start us off. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with the home pups here. Give me the Atlanta Hawks plus 3.5 against the Suns. I have a lot of confidence in this play with them. They've been showing up against the Suns historically. Trey Young, he's going to be a little bit pissed off about not being an all-star, so he's going to lead the team to a win and a big night. Also going with Rudy Gobert, over 26.5 PR is going up against Orlando. Historically, he dominates Orlando. This would just be another game on that register. Yeah, and I like the magic on the road, plus 7.5. I'm with Trey. I think Tebow's probably win the game, uh, but plus 7.5 is too many points for this magic team right now, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And then I like CJ McCollum, over 2.5 made threes again. Might not be over 2.5, might be at 3.5 plus money. Either way, I'm going to take his over against the Spurs. They're really bad uh, at guarding the perimeter, and CJ McCollum is in desperate need of a bounce back performance. So I like CJ McCollum to go over his three-point shots. Guys, that's going to do it for the NBA Plays and Props for Friday, February 2nd slate of games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like in this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. All right, guys, new intro here for the Bear Pack. We hit 10,000 subscribers again. We want to thank everybody again. Trey, if you want to pull that 10,000 subscribers up, if you guys comment, Llama, on any of our videos up until Super Bowl, you will be entered into winning $1,000 from us. The only catch is, come Super Bowl Sunday, you have to be in the chat to claim the prize. We're going to have a live at halftime. You have to be in the chat to claim the prize, and you have to comment Llama on any of the videos up until the Super Bowl. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. We also have a new game. It's going to be Trey and myself versus the Bear Pack. You can call it Pros versus Joes if you want. I don't really like the name because I don't consider us pros. I don't consider you guys Joes. But, Trey, if you want to go to the YouTube channel, this is how you guys play. You're going to go to our YouTube channel. You're going to hit the Community tab. We've been the Community tab a lot this season. Uh, you're going to go to the Community tab. We have our plays for the day. So, obviously, the intro is not going to have plays for today. But these are our plays for our next video. It's the Pelicans minus 2.5, the Heat minus 5, Quinnipiac minus 4.5, and, and Wisconsin minus 10.5. Those are Trey's and myself's plays. What you guys are going to do is pick which one you think will not hit, meaning you're going to fade us, which is pros versus Joes, which is the game called. But you guys are going to try to pick which one is not going to hit. If you guys win, you're going to get a point. If we win, we're going to get a point. We're going to run it Friday through Friday every single week. Whichever team has the most wins, so 4-3, to 6-2, to two, whatever it is, that person or group will win fifty dollars. If the community wins, we're going to do a wheel spin for the community. If we win, I don't know how we're going to get our. I don't know how we're going to get our cheddar, but uh, you guys are just going to have to subscribe, I guess, more. But that's the game. Hopefully, everybody understands it. Trey, let's get into the video. Look at the leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, bearsprofitplays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 